The movie starts in a military research center. A lieutenant is on duty conducting a daily inspection on the military satellites when she sees large, abnormal waves coming towards the Earth from the sun. A view from space shows us the waves destroying every satellite on their way. The lieutenant at first does not believe her eyes and thinks her computer is malfunctioning. She informs the captain about the waves, but is asked to ignore any abnormality she sees for the next 24 hours. The woman finds this suspicious and is sure that the waves are something they should worry about. Then we are introduced to Armand, a scuba diving instructor and a submarine engineer. He lives a simple life off a coast somewhere in Turkey. If that guy's life is simple, my life is dumb as hell. One morning, he is approached by his ex-girlfriend, Victoria. Victoria is a marine biologist and is planning to go on a submarine dive to the depth of the Inkirlik Air Base. She has picked out a team of five and found sponsors to fund the trip, but is in need of a submarine and a team leader. Armand refuses to join when he finds out that the sponsor is his millionaire father, who he hates. A day after Victoria's visit, Armand gives it a thought and decides to join the trip to spite his father. When he goes to her place to inform her, he's received by a man. Armand thinks he is in the wrong house, only to find out that the man is Victoria's fiancé, Freddy. He will also join them at the airbase, but will stay on the ship and handle the technical part of the project. Armand feels uneasy working with the man, but doesn't show it on his face. Somewhere else, the soldier who saw the waves in the morning gets anxious and calls her mother. She asks everyone in her family to find a safe space underground because something terrible is going to happen when the sun rises. As soon as she hangs up, two soldiers barge into her house. The woman manages to trick them and drives away in her car. The scene cuts to the night of the initiation of the submarine project. The rest of the team consists of a foreigner, Felix, Armand's best friend Benson, and a college student named Rana. All five crewmates excitedly board the ship alongside Freddy and the captain. Upon reaching the airbase in the middle of the ocean, Freddy and Victoria wish each other goodbye, and the crew of five gets into the submarine. The ship's captain stops Victoria and tells her something strange is happening in East Asia, where the sun has risen. However, they assume it won't affect them and start the descent. Everything goes well for most of the trip, and the crew stays underwater for more than 12 hours. Suddenly, Armand notices that the ocean is too bright, given the fact that they are in the aphotic zone, where the sunlight doesn't reach. He moves the submarine towards the surface, declaring that the trip is over. Hours later, they reach the surface, but the submarine loses connection with the ship's crew. Armand tries shouting to get their attention, but even that doesn't work. With no options left, Felix moves the submarine towards the ship, while Armand uses a rope to climb up. He and Victoria are the first ones to get on the ship. They look everywhere, only to find out that the crew, even Freddy, deserted them in the middle of the ocean. In the control room, they finally find a video of Freddy explaining what is going on. In the video, he frantically tells Victoria that the sunrise is killing people all around the world. By now, almost everyone in Asia has died, and more are getting killed every second. Freddy and the crew are going to a bunker on a nearby island where the sunlight cannot reach. Armand and Victoria do not waste time packing up supplies and returning to the submarine. After the crew is informed of what happened, they make their way to the nearest island where the safe bunker lies. A while later, they reach the shore, but as they dock the submarine, they see another giant submarine emerge just a few meters away. The group watches in awe as a group of soldiers step out of the submarine. The captain meets Armand and finds out about what is going on in the world. Not a single person can be seen outside, so they assume everyone is in the bunker. The groups decide to join hands to get to the bottom of the situation. Suddenly, Victoria's satellite phone receives a message. It is a video of Freddy running to the bunker. In the background, hundreds of people are running around hugging their loved ones. The soldiers separate into groups and go into the city to look for survivors. Armand, Victoria, and the commander also leave to look for the bunker. When they finally reach a more populated area, they start seeing dead bodies. Because the bodies have no visible injuries except for burnt tongues, it seems as though everyone combusted internally and died a horrible death. Following the pattern of dead bodies, they reach a church filled with more dead people who died hugging their loved ones or praying to God. Just when Victoria is about to lose hope of seeing her fiancé, a soldier informs the commander about a man they found in the bank. It is revealed that a man locked himself inside a safe in the bank and managed to survive. However, his body is fried from the inside and he doesn't have much time to live. Armand asks him where the bunker is but only gets a vague reply. At last, the commander shoots the guy dead out of mercy. He talks to the chief and both of them decide to return to the submarine in the next 30 minutes. Armand and Victoria have that much time to look for Freddy or they will be left behind. Victoria suddenly recognizes the place in the video Freddy sent her and drives to the bunker with Armand. Back in the bank, a bunch of soldiers start pocketing bundles of money. They are stopped by the chief engineer who enters the safe with them. Suddenly, the door to the safe closes and is locked.
locked automatically. A soldier named Altan tries helping them from outside, but since no one knows the code to open the safe, they are certainly locked. Altan has to reluctantly leave his brothers to die and return to the submarine. He starts hating Armand and his group, blaming them for his friend's death. Back in the dock, Rana gets a signal on her phone and finds a news article about the crisis. It explains that the sun's polarization changes direction every 11 years. Over the course of the last few changes, the magnitude has been decreasing gradually. The most recent change might have caused a shift and radiated a large amount of energy, enough to kill humans and all organisms on Earth. The article has a lot of unexplained terminology and vague wording, which Rana assumes is because the person who wrote it must have been in a hurry. A while later, Armand and Victoria finally reach the bunker and run inside, only to find out the thick walls did not keep the people safe. Many people lie on the ground, which makes Victoria nervous. She holds her breath until she finally sees Freddy's dead body on the ground and bursts into tears. His phone lies at his side, where he recorded a final message for Victoria. In it, he happily declares that he is safe because the sun has been up for five minutes and no one is dead yet. Seconds later, he starts yelling in pain and dies. Dude jinxed himself. As his screams echo through the walls, Armand struggles to pause the video. At last, he breaks the phone out of frustration. Victoria doesn't even have enough time to give him a proper burial before they drive back to the docks. By the time they get there, the submarine is already closed and ready to descend. The commander doesn't want them inside, but the chief orders him to do otherwise. The group soon realizes that the only person on their side is the chief, and the rest of the soldiers hate them. They are asked to clean the toilets and stay away from everyone's sight if they want to stay safe. As they are settling in, the submarine starts moving aggressively. The soldiers panic because no one knows what the problem is. Moreover, the chief engineer died earlier in the bank, and the group lacks a skilled engineer. Suddenly, Armand recognizes the problem is with the submarine's hydraulics and fixes them. The chief, impressed by his skills, makes him the chief engineer. The commander is not happy about this, but he doesn't go against the chief's decision. Later, the group is cleaning the living quarters as ordered. Even in times of crisis, they joke around and try to make themselves feel better. The fun time is interrupted when Altan comes to check on them and hits them with several insults. When the group resists, he assaults Benson. Having had enough, Victoria goes to the chief and tells him about how they are being treated like murderers. The man promises to ensure their safety before sending them away. Meanwhile, in the living quarters, Altan secretly drinks alcohol with his buddies. They look for their stash of canned food and find some missing. A drunk, Altan assumes it was Victoria who stole it and starts threatening her. He is stopped by Operation Officer. Olivia, who also happens to be the chief's daughter. Altan doesn't stop there and wakes up every soldier to rebel against Armand and his group. He demands the chief throw them out of the submarine as per the majority's wish. The chief sternly asks him to stop causing trouble and is mad at him for drinking when it is not allowed. Moreover, the soldiers are restricted from taking canned goods to the living quarters, which gets Altan deeper into trouble. Armand then comes forward to apologize and calm everyone down. He explains that they need each other to survive because they might be the only humans alive on the planet. His wise comments make the commander change his mind about Armand and his group, and he starts to trust them. Felix, who is still in the living quarters, sees a soldier carrying a hand grenade carelessly. He panics and quickly runs to tell everyone else about it. The chief and the rest of the group race to the living quarters and find the man smiling, looking at the grenade. The death of his family back home has gotten the best of him, making him irrational. He thinks that everyone in the submarine should die so they can start a new life with their families in heaven. The chief tries his best to reason with him and calm him down, but nothing works. As a last resort, he walks into the room and closes the door behind him to save the others. The grenade goes off, and both the chief and the soldier die in the explosion. Seconds later, the soldiers start fixing the damage done by the explosion. Everything seems repairable, except for a singular hole in the floor of the control room. No matter how hard Armand tries, the water pressure doesn't let the metal stay to cover the hole. The only way to solve this is to close it from the outside. Olivia volunteers to help help Armand in the mission, even though she is still emotionally unstable after her father's death. They swim outside and reach the impact area. Armand welds metal to cover the hole, as Olivia holds a flashlight for a better view in the dark. Suddenly, a fish attacks her, making her lose hold of a necklace that was her father's last gift. She swims to get it back, but loses sight of the submarine in the process. When Armand notices her missing, he goes to look for her. The two find each other, but they have trouble getting back to the submarine again. Fortunately, the electric system in the submarine is fixed 
and they follow the lights to get back inside. Before they reconvene with the others, Armand asks Olivia to forget about what happened so she won't get into trouble. Inside, everyone is relieved to see them safe. The hole is fixed and the water level inside the submarine decreases. The following night, they reach the army base to stock up on supplies and find out more about what happened to the sun. Benson is assigned no tasks, so he walks up the hill to get a view of the city. Upon finally reaching the top, he sees wildfire overtaking the city. Everything is happening so fast that he can barely keep track of who he is without his family. Eventually, he loses the will to live. Meanwhile, the commander and the others walk into the base to find their colleagues dead in the emergency room. Looking around, they realize the soldiers were trying to think of an escape plan before their death. They give all the dead soldiers a proper burial before looking around the base for items that might come in handy. A while later, as Armand and Olivia are collecting food, he realizes that everything has lost its taste. It is almost as if the sunlight sucked out all the nutrients from the food. Before they can research further, they hear a noise and go out to check who it is. Somewhere else, Victoria and Benson are looking for medicine and vitamins in the Army Base Health Center. Benson secretly pulls out a pill and eats it to get high. Call me crazy, but this seems like a really bad time to get high. At the same time, Felix is inside the submarine with Armand, talking about his life before everything. He mentions a silver flashlight he lost in the submarine and goes to the living quarters to check for it. Suddenly, he sees a person running out of the submarine. Since he and Armand were the only ones who were supposed to be in the quarters, he follows the person. Soon, the soldiers join him and the episode ends as they finally surround the stranger. To see what happens next, watch the second part in series recapped.